Hello, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube. I am the Malt Activist, and I am back with one more smashing kick you in the face video designed to destroy YouTube's algorithms. Ha 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 ha. That's right, we are doing five whiskeys for five different occasions. Wow, even I have to admit that was super melodramatic. I don't know why I did it. I think I have all this pent up energy for not making a video in this last one week. So it all came flooding out at one time, all for your viewing pleasure. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry, also extremely, extremely dramatic. So here's the deal. I came across this little um, uh, internet challenge or YouTube challenge that whiskey bloggers were giving each other. And it was basically for them to identify five different whiskeys for five different occasions. Now, you know, you want to hear what the best part is? The best part is that no one nominated me. <laughs> That's right. I decided to nominate myself. That just shows how alone I am in the world. But that's okay, I have you guys, and that's what really matters. Okay, so here's the deal. Five whiskeys, five different occasions. What are those occasions? Let me read them out. Um, daily drinker. Um, which whiskey do you choose to impress your guests with? Hmm, okay. Which whiskey you would mix something with? Okay. What is your weekend pour? All right. And finally, what is your special occasion whiskey? Hmm, okay, fair enough. I think uh, uh, decent questions uh, and intriguing questions and I have answers to all of these. So let's dive right into it. So what's my daily drinker? Here's the deal. I do not drink daily and I think neither should you. Frankly, uh, it's not a good habit drinking every day. It's uh, I think it's a bad habit I think it's a downward spiral into alcoholism. So whatever you do, just please please be uh, a Responsible drinker. Don't let whiskey be ruin your life However, there are people I know who do drink every day and they drink in moderation and they're kind of doing well and they exercise as well So what do I know right, but I'm not one of those people. So if you do drink every day, please drink responsibly I don't want this to be like a preachy video, so to each their own, and I wish you good health. So, if there was a whiskey that I wanted to drink every day, what would I do? So, I have a few, few criterias, right? Uh, number one, it has to be low in strength, right? It needs to be palatable. Uh, I'm not drinking cast strength whiskeys and, and really uh, 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 challenging my palate if I'm going to drink it daily. So, it has to be low strength. It definitely has to be flavorful. It should be a delicious whiskey. I drink whiskey for, for the pleasure of it, right? That means it has to taste good. I'm not drinking any bullshit whiskey. Uh, it has to be low to medium range in price. I'm not made out of gold, you know? So I have to watch the budget. And that means I will choose something that is sort of low to mid range. Um, and, and for me, that's about, let's say 40 to 50, 40 to 50 dollars. So what, what falls in that category? Now here's the deal, I cannot pick one whiskey. It's impossible, right? It's like saying, who's your favorite child? Or uh, who's your uh, favorite Pokemon? No, I don't even know what a Pokemon is. I don't know why I use that reference. Uh, but you know what I mean, right? Uh, so what I'll do is I will share with you uh, some whiskeys that I currently have in the bar that I don't mind imbibing very frequently, which means that they all kind of follow uh, those criteria that I just laid out, right? So if I'm to drink a single malt on a daily basis, then my current poison is the Tamdu 15, which I think is uh, quite flavorful, very nicely constructed, a good solid whiskey, um, not very, very low strength, 46%. I'm happy with that. Good flavors, good value for money. And so uh, I'm happy to suggest this as your daily dram. Or another one that caught my eye was a Loch Lomond 12 year old. 12 year old, eight statement. I think this sells for something like 
30, 35 pounds, so good value for money, good drinking, good drinking scotch this. If you don't want to drink single malt every day, you can also choose to drink uh, a good run of the mill blend. Uh, I'd recommend a good Shivers Regal 12 or Johnny Walker Double Black. Those are, those are my go-to uh, blended scotch whiskeys that I, uh, I reach reach for. If I, if I need something that's not complicated, I just wanna sit down and have a drink. So uh, I'd, I'd go with, uh, with those two. Um, any other blend? Monkey Shoulder? I guess, but uh, but I think just for everyday casual drinking, uh, a good Chivas Regal or Johnny Walker Double Black is a great choice. And uh, if you're a bourbon man, like I am, I don't mind drinking the Maker's Mark. It's a good whiskey. I've recently developed a taste for the Pikesville Straight Rye. Also a great whiskey. Now, the, my only problem with the Maker's Mark is the moment that liquid touches my palate, I need to make an old fashioned. I have a hankering for an old fashioned. I just do. And so maybe that's it, you know? Maybe I drink one good old fashioned every day uh, made by Maker's Mark, and you know, that'll sort of satisfy my craving for a, for a daily dram. So that's it, yeah. So those are my picks. Uh, for my uh, for my daily dram if if ever there was one they keep changing and if anyone tells you They drink just the one whiskey every day then they're lying uh, Or they're extremely boring. I don't know which uh, I don't know which is worse to be a liar or to be boring and I am neither so uh, Whatever's in my in my shelf at that moment uh, anything that's palatable low strength delicious and easy on the pocket Yeah, that could be my daily dram Okay, the second question was, which whiskey do you choose to impress your guests with? Now, this is a tricky question because I think there are three types of guests, okay? Guest number one, the complete noob who has no idea about whiskey, okay? They are the easiest to impress and I love those guests. They make my day, right? They have, they have very low expectations, they come in and they're willing to be treated with whatever it is that I offer them and they're very happy to accept. Like, I'll be like, whoa, today we drink moonshine and they're like, moonshine, yeah, give us moonshine and then drink all the moonshine and they don't care. Now, I'm not saying they don't care, but I'm just saying that they're easily impressed. So those are my favorite kind of guests. But uh, seriously, I you know what I do is I would I would start them uh, I would start them slow and I'd start them strong, right? I'd start them with like a Glenlivet 15 French Oak Reserve, very nice to drink, very palatable, good good all round whiskey, you know something like that. And they would I know they would have it and they'd be like, oh my god, this is so delicious, this is so lovely, this is so drinkable. And because my my ulterior motive, my grandmaster plan is to convert all these noobs into whiskey geeks. Then your my second type of guest are my friends who are let's say whiskey drinkers, but they're not nerds like me. They're not that easy to impress. However, I found that without fail, there's one whiskey, which when I introduce them to impresses the living hell out of them. And that whiskey is the George D. Stag. Now I know it's a little unfair for me to bring up the George D. Stag given that it's a massive unicorn and nobody can ever get their hands on it and it's such a hard whiskey to find and it's so, and so expensive as well. But I have a few bottles lying around that I opened long time ago and I, and I, and I take very, very small sips from it because you know why. And so when I introduce this whiskey to them and I tell them, look, this is like almost 70% ABV. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, we don't, even, we don't even drink bourbon. I said, well, today you will. And then I pour them a little, little sip and then they drink it and I see their face and they're hit with this massive explosion of flavors. And they're like, oh my God, I had no idea that a whiskey like this could exist. I thought I knew everything about whiskey. And then, I'm, then, then there's me sitting in the corner very smugly uh, nursing a glass in hand and saying, mm, I told you so. So that's a good whiskey to impress my friends with anyway. And then finally, the hardest, the hardest group of friends to convince are my, 
are my colleagues in my whiskey club, right? They've drunk pretty much exactly what I've drunk, right? So it's very hard to impress me. So it's very hard to impress them. So I've realized that they're not impressed with, uh, you know, uh, old whiskeys or expensive whiskeys. They're impressed with complex whiskeys, with hard to find whiskeys, uniquely constructed whiskeys, whiskeys off, uh, you know, uh, off the beaten path whiskeys that they like. And for that, I remember, okay, I have it right here. Oh, hang on. Something like this, something, an independent bottle. Like for example, this is a six year old Puna Haven, heavily peated, single cask, served at a eye watering, 59.7%. Now imagine, imagine someone who's a whiskey geek, whiskey nerd, and he's tried a lot of Buna Haven, and he suddenly comes across this first filled bourbon Buna Haven, because Buna Haven is always sherried, always sherried, if it comes from the distillery, but this, no. This is an independent bottle by the whiskey barrel, and this first filled bourbon, and it's only six years old, and it's cost strength, and it's heavily peated. That's such a different Buna Haven. It's not expensive. I think maybe like 40, 50, 60 pounds, something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but it didn't cost me an arm and a leg, and I got it because it was so unusual, and that's what impressed them. So depending on what kind of friends you have over and how easy they are to impress, there's a range of whiskeys you can try. Our third criteria is which whiskey would you mix something with? Ah, I don't like this question. It's a weird question. Um, is making a cocktail mixing something with whiskey? Technically, yes. Uh, in which case, Maker's Mark for me and Old Fashioned, you know, I'm happy to go there. Uh, but if you're just talking, I don't know, Coke or, or, or Seven Up or lots of water or soda or something like that, then I really don't have anything. At best, I think what I do is, and this is what we do when we go out to clubs or bars or whatever, me and my friends, is I'll drink a Shivas, most probably like a Shivas 12, and I'll you know drop some ice in it and maybe like a hint of water because I'm not really looking at tasting the alcohol. I just I just need a little buzz and it's it's very delicious, you know, definitely. And it's nice, easy, it's refreshing as well. So, and you can drink lots of it, which is, uh, you know, not necessarily a good thing, but, um, yeah, if there was a whiskey that I'd put a mixer in, probably some sort of blended whiskey. Uh, I don't mix my whiskeys when I'm sitting at home, so bit of a redundant question for me. However, having said that, uh, if we're talking cocktails, then Maker's Mark for sure. Uh, where is it? There it is. Show it you again. So, you know, Maker's Mark for sure for my, for my old fashioned. Uh, and I generally don't... Uh, try and uh, mix my single malts with really anything. Uh, I prefer, ha prefer to have them straight. At best, I will do a few drops of water uh, if it's a very, very high strength whiskey or if I'm trying to, you know, bring out any flavors. So, yeah, uh, I don't like this question. This is a stupid question. Um, but yeah, I hope I answered it. The fourth one is what is your weekend pour? Again, stupid, stupid question. What's a weekend pour? I, I don't know what that means. Uh, what whiskeys do I have over the weekend? Uh, the whiskeys that I have during the week. I don't have a special whiskey for the weekend. Um, in fact, if there's a special whiskey for the weekend, for me personally, because, you know, I go out and stuff, will be like some cheap blend that I mix with, uh, you know, a bit of ice and, you know, a touch of water, and I drink it just to hydrate myself. Uh, but if I'm sitting at home, and I have friends over for the weekend, A, I'll most probably drink wine, because that's my thing really, but if I'm drinking whiskey, um, I'll do a range of different whiskeys. I'll try stuff that I haven't had in a long time. I'll try stuff that I haven't had at all, which is always fun. Or I'll have a whiskey that my friend wants to have. It's quite simple, really. Um, so yeah, so weekend pour, again, it's a bit of a redundant question. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm fairly flexible and easy about these things. So I'm not an elitist. I don't turn my nose up on anything. Uh, if it's the weekend, if I'm going out, I'll drink something, uh, cheap, uh, cheap and easy to get that I'll mix with some water. Nice. Maybe, 
Uh, and if I'm at home and I'm chilling with a friend, then I might go through three or four different whiskeys. Anything that sort of catches my attention, something that, uh, you know, uh, I've been meaning to try for a while or something that's new or, uh, or like I said, something that my friend wants to try. So yeah, stupid question, but I think I answered it. Okay, but I will tell you what I had last weekend, which I absolutely loved and fell in love with, was this 14-year-old Lefroig from the giant that is SMWS. I had this bottle with me for a while and I hadn't drunk it. I had maybe just one dram of it a long time ago. And this weekend I brought it out for a couple of friends who were over and wanted to try something new. And so I brought this baby out and I have to tell you, I am in love. This is a beautiful whiskey. This is a single cast, first fill bourbon from SMWS, 14 year old Lefroig. It's called Umami. You've been on my mind. What a cool name. So this is what I had over the weekend. Is it my regular weekend pour? No, no sir. I don't think there is such a thing. And finally, what is my special occasion whiskey? <sighs> I can be cliched and say, well, every time you drink whiskey, it is a special occasion. Uh, but no, I'm not gonna do that. I think my special occasion whiskey would, would really have to be something special, obviously. Uh, you know, if you're celebrating uh, uh, your kid's graduation or, or the birth of your child, or the fact that your wife ran away with your best friend, no matter what your celebration is, uh, I think you should have a whiskey that you've, um, that, that has enamored you over the years, that you have a certain affinity to and a certain uh, emotional connection to. And for me, that is the Lefroy 25 year old. Uh, because I remember buying, um, buying my first Lefroy 25 year old, that was my, biggest splurge at that time and I was like oh my god how am I ever going to be able to afford this um, but I did and I bought it and it, and I drank it and it was beautiful and it was amazing and uh, and so I managed to get a few more bottles uh, to keep on the shelf so that's what my special occasion whiskey is uh, I haven't had a real real special occasion in a few years now uh, but I'm going to have one next year and I'll tell you what it is. And I think probably around that time I'm going to open up uh, something special. But I will also definitely uh, uncork another Lefroy 25 year old. Um, where is it? Where are you baby? Oh there you are. Hold on one second. Yes, I'm back. And look, look how beautiful this is. In this nice wooden box with these clasps. And then you take it out and it's there sitting in, mm, I haven't taken this out in a long time, you know, sitting in some, whatever that thing is, what do you call this thing? Uh, stuffing? I don't know. And yeah, here it is. The Lefroy 25 year old, my go-to dram for a special occasion. And this one, oh, this is so interesting. This, this, is, this is the first one that I bought, by the way. Um, and this is a 2011 special edition cask strength. And you won't believe what the cask strength is. It's 48.6% ABV. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the angel's share on this? But it is truly a remarkable whiskey, one of my absolute favorites. And yes, every time there's a special occasion, I will, I will bring this out and share it with friends. Has to be with friends, always with friends, never by yourself. Otherwise, it's not really a celebration or a special occasion. So there you have it. My five whiskeys, well, not really five. I think I, I rattled off like 15, but my, my five whiskeys for five different occasions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, share it with your whiskey friends, tell them all about me, and let's spread the word of the Malta activist. Until next time, peace.